Hey, it's Glassboxed here and today we are going to look at Cucumber Scenario Outline. We're going to look at what a scenario outline is and why you would want to use it. So let's get started straight away. To understand what a scenario outline is, what we need to do is slightly take a backtrack so that we can understand what we're trying to do and then we will be able to apply the logic of a scenario outline a little bit better. So in the previous tutorial we looked at passing in parameters such as this. But if you have a look, this particular scenario is designed to only click on the web driver Cucumber Tutorial main page, i.e. the purpose of this scenario is to check that the web driver page has loaded correctly. But if you look at the test steps, then this is very misleading because what we're actually doing is clicking on two other pages as well. So let's just say for some reason this test fails. It could have failed because of the other two pages also. So the scenario itself becomes very misleading because now the scenario is almost doing what it isn't designed to do. In other words, the test of the scenario is to check that this given page has loaded. However, the scenario is actually checking two other pages. So to write good scenarios, we need to make sure that we write them to be more specific and precise. So ideally, what we should do is, since this is the web driver one, this scenario should only contain a link to the web driver page. This one will contain a reference only to the Java Cucumber one. And this one will contain a link to the Git page. So now we have three very specific scenarios where one is for Java WebDriver, one is for Java Cucumber, and one is for Git tutorial. So if I right click and just say pretty format, then it really nicely indents the whole thing for me. So now if we save this and run it, what we should see is three different scenarios running one after the other, because now we've supplied three different scenarios. So let's just right click and run this. Great. So now we saw three different instances of the Firefox browser opening and running all three scenarios. In other words, this was the first one, this was the second one, and this was the third one. Or to be more specific, first we run against the Java web driver, and then the Java cucumber, and finally against the Git tutorial pages. So this is the right way of writing the scenarios i.e. each scenario is doing something that is very specific and isn't doing more than it is intended to do. So if you now look at these scenarios, you will see something. You will see that although these three scenarios are actually checking different things, they are almost identical to each other. In other words, this scenario is very similar to this one and this one. In fact, the only difference between the three scenarios is the parameter that we pass in. So with the exception of the parameter, all three scenarios are exactly the same. In other words, if I just did this, these two scenarios are now identical to each other. The only difference is the title of the scenario, or rather the description of the scenario. But we know that the description really has nothing to do with the actual code that is executed against a given scenario. So let me just undo that. So now if we think about it, what we're basically doing, or rather what we basically did in the previous tutorial was to reduce code duplication, we added in parameters, i.e. by using parameters we were able to call the same step definition method. However, if we utilize something called scenario outline, we can also reduce 
the amount of duplication that happens in a feature file. So scenario outline is something we can use to reduce duplication amongst scenarios which use very similar steps where the only difference are the parameters that we pass in. So let's write one and see what it looks like. To write a scenario outline, which is different to a scenario, you say scenario outline and notice that it has been highlighted. Next, let's pass in a description. So I'm just going to copy this in. And instead of saying git tutorial main page, I will just say to check that tutorial pages have loaded. So if you now look, the difference between this line of text, or rather these three lines of text for each scenario, and this scenario outline line of text, is that this is checking for something very specific, whereas this is checking for something on a much more broader term. Now let's go ahead and copy in the actual steps. Now instead of passing in this Java WebDriver tutorial, we will do something slightly different. We will pass in a reference to a page object instead. Now again notice that this is highlighted slightly differently to this. This is highlighted in a very green color, whereas this is highlighted in a very orange color. For scenario outline, we can pass in multiple values for parameters, but the value of this parameter is set on a very iterative basis from a table. Now, where is this table? The table is something you define immediately underneath the scenario outline, and the table looks like this. We say examples, and again notice that this has been highlighted as a keyword. And in examples, you can pass in what type of examples you're actually passing in. So let's just say page titles. Now, the format of the examples table looks like this. We pass in a pipe and the first row of the example table must match up to the reference that we're trying to pass in. In this case, it is page. And then every other row under the first row. So again, the first row is used purely to help the scenario outline identify what column to read data from. From the second row onwards, anything we pass in is the actual data. So in this case, if we now pass in this, then when this scenario outline runs, it will substitute the value of page with the value of Java WebDriver tutorial. So let's just format this. And what we will do is we will comment out all of these. And now what we will do is save this and run it. Okay, so notice that the step has actually run against the Java WebDriver tutorial page even though we didn't actually supply the information over there. Great, so it looks like it worked. Now, before we go any forward, something to really quickly point out. The plugin is saying that the step definition doesn't exist, but we know as a matter of fact it does because we just run it and it just worked. This is probably a downfall of the plugin itself because in reality, this is actually matching. Cucumber is working fine. So if you want to resolve something like this, what we can do is we can pass in the double quotes here and we can get rid of the double quotes here. And let's just format this again. Actually, let's not format it just yet. 
This is now basically saying the same thing. You see, when you pass in any value using these greater than and less than arrow signs, Cucumber assumes that you are going to pass in an example or rather a data from an examples table. So now if we run this, it should just work. So let's just do that first just to make sure. Okay, great. Looks like it worked. Now, let's actually look at this in a little bit more detail. So the very first question we wanted to answer for this tutorial is what is a scenario outline? A scenario outline is essentially a scenario, but it has the ability to run on an iterative cycle based on the amount of data that you pass in in an examples table. As opposed to say passing in parameters using double quotation mark, a scenario outline expects you pass in data using less than and greater than arrow sign. So this means this scenario will run just the one time because it only has one data row. The first row is simply used to substitute or rather identify what column the value should be from. So in this case, page is referring to this column here. So when we run this scenario, it only ran the one time. However, these scenarios each ran individually on their own because these are three different scenarios. It's obvious, we can see that. However, this is the power of example tables. We can quite happily do something like this. We can actually pass in multiple values in the example table. And what Cucumber will do is it will run this scenario outline for each data row that it sees. So what this is now doing is effectively replacing these three scenarios. So what a scenario outline does is that it helps you to reuse the same scenario in a feature file but pass in multiple values. The advantage you get from this is you don't have to write out multiple scenarios. All you need to do now is just pass in the value of another page. So this examples table could be ever growing, but the number of scenarios that you actually have to write still stays the same. So in this previous tutorial, we took advantage of passing in parameters to make sure that we only needed to write a single step definition to cater for parameters. In this tutorial, we're almost doing the same thing, but on the other side. We're doing the same thing by using a scenario outline to reduce the number of scenarios that you would actually end up writing. So now if we just delete these, uh, let's just format this and save this and let's run it. And there you go. So now if you have a look, we ran again three scenarios as seen by the outline here. Three scenarios with a total of nine steps. In other words, three steps that run three times. Three times three, nine. Simple maths. And that's it. Scenario outlines are very powerful. They allow you to reduce the amount of scenarios that you end up writing and also give you the ability to add in or rather run the same scenario using different parameters. And that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks ever so much for watching my video as I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos and kindly like and share my videos as this is one of the best ways for me to grow my ever evolving channel. If you have any ideas or suggestions for this video series then let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, ciao.